In this video, we'll learn about scene scale with Bifrost. All right, so here you have a simple uh, scene set up. Uh, stuff that we've looked at so far, so we have our emitter that we're emitting particles from, our bifrost liquid, uh, we actually have a container, we'll look at um, setting up containers and colliders and things like that later on, um, but really I just want to focus on this, um, let me actually turn this off so we can see our particles a little bit easier. Because when you're working with Bifrost, one of the big questions, or really when you're working with any particles, one of the big questions that you're going to have to deal with is how big is what you're, how big is this simulation? So this container right here that we're holding all of these particles inside of, if you look, we can see the scale for this is 25 by 8 by 25. So by default in Maya, you're going to be working in centimeters. So we can see that up here, Windows, Setting Preferences. Uh, we can see that I am working at the default working units of centimeters. So as far as Maya is concerned, this is 25 centimeters by 8 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So um, really, it's a pretty small uh, container for our particles. However, when it comes to Bifrost, none of that makes any difference. And the reason for that is because of something that we touched on earlier, Bifrost actually lives outside of Maya. So the scene scale inside of Maya doesn't have any sort of effect on what Bifrost is going to assume for the scale. So what does that mean? Well, Bifrost actually assumes that every unit in Maya is a meter. So instead of assuming that this is 25 centimeters by 8 centimeters by 25 centimeters, Bifrost is calculating this at 25 meters by 8 meters by 25 meters. All of a sudden, this container got a lot bigger. Now, this is really important to keep in mind because this is going to have a very different effect on the uh, simulation that you're going to be creating or the, the settings that you're going to be using to create the results that you want. Now we could go in and change our scene scale and Maya to be meters, um, but really Bifrost doesn't care about that. That is what we talked about before. So changing your scene scale isn't going to affect that. Instead, a good workflow for working with Bifrost is to actually scale your geometry up or down um, or just model it to assume that one unit equals one meter. And then that way when you get to the time of simulating or actually creating your Bifrost particles, um, then the scale will be correct and you'll be getting the results that you expect. So we'll kind of look at that a little bit later on. I just wanted to point that out um, early on because it is very important to keep in mind that Bifrost is assuming everything is meters. Now there's a couple other things that Bifrost is going to assume when you're working, and that is um, some of the different uh, units that it uses. So Bifrost uses um, SI units or the International System of Units. So it's going to assume that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, things like the liquid density is going to be a thousand kilograms per meter. And then the surface tension is going to be just the these are assumptions that Bifrost is going to make internally when it's calculating things. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you're inputting temperatures for Bifrost, um, you're going to be inputting those as Celsius, right? However, on, on the back end, or actually as it's calculating and processing this, um, it's actually going to be converting that into Kelvin to actually do the processing. So depending on what your project is, uh, you may need to make some calculations to kind of figure out exactly what uh, the results are that you want. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're working in Bifrost. All right, now let's hop back into Maya real quick. Now one very, very key attribute for Bifrost is the master voxel scale. And this is going to, um, this is actually very reliant on the overall scale of the particles. So let's see what I mean by that. So if I come into my liquid here, let's hit control A in order to open this up. There we go, in the liquid container, we'll find our master voxel scale. So right now it's set to the default value of 0.5, which would be um, half a meter as uh, 
uh, Bifrost is assuming everything is, is in meters. Now, when we adjust this, we're going to be controlling the size of the actual voxels that Bifrost is using to generate these particles. So what do I mean by that? So essentially when we have our voxel scale, so let's say this one on the left here is the default value of 0.5, let's say. And these are just examples, so they're really arbitrary what they are, but um, when you have a larger voxel, that means you're going to end up with less particles that get generated from those voxels. Now, if you decrease that uh, master voxel size, make it a smaller value, you're going to have smaller voxels, which in turn is going to increase the resolution of your simulation. Now that is going to also increase your simulation time. So it's probably not something you're going to want to do until the very end, or if you actually need to in your simulation. If there's something that maybe you have a lot of um, high resolution detail you need in there to see, uh, you can do that, but it is going to increase your time. So if I take this, let's maybe uh, do something like 0.25, so half of what it was before, right? So if I take that and let's, there we go, just move it just a little bit so that we get that uh, scratch cache in there. You can see we have a lot more uh, particles that have been generated just by adjusting this master voxel scale. And we can see that if I hop into my uh, Bifrost HUD, we can see we have 324,000 particles being generated from 525,000 voxels in this area. And the more that I decrease this value, as I decrease that, move just a little bit so we can kind of force it to uh, regenerate or recompile that. There we go. So all of a sudden now we have over a million particles that are being generated by decreasing this scale. So um, it is something that you'll want to probably do at the end of your simulation, start to increase that um, because that will increase the time it takes to actually simulate everything. All right, so that brings us to the end of this module. So just to recap, in this module, we learned uh, some core ways that Bifrost works. We looked at creating our first Bifrost fluids. Uh, we looked at simulating and then caching those simulations to disk. Uh, we also learned how we can stop and start our particle emissions. And then of course, in this video, we learned about Bifrost scene scale. Thank you.